language policy on education. Okay, next, please. So Myanmar is the second lar largest in Southeast Asia. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so Myanmar is the second largest in Southeast Asia and its population is 51.49 million according to 2014 census. Next, next slide, okay. So Myanmar has seven states and seven regions with 135 national races. The major ethnic groups are Kachin Kayakin, Mon Rakai, and Bamashan. Myanmar people comprise of 68%, Shan people 9%, Kayan people 7%, Rakhine people 4%, Mon people 2%, Chinese people 3%, and Indian 2%. Now, may I introduce the Myanmar education in brief. Languages in Myanmar belong to several distinct families. 78% of the languages are Tifatu Bamin languages, 10% belong to Thai Kalai languages, 7% belong to Mon Khmer languages, and ethnic languages are spoken by 23 million in Myanmar. The other languages used in Myanmar are the Chinese, Malay, Bengali, Sydney, Hindu, and so on. So the official language is the Myanmar language spoken by 32 million. The foreign language of Myanmar is the English. So English is regarded as a foreign language. Monastic education was very popular during the time of ancient kings. The British occupied Burma, so we, so our country, the Myanmar, was called Burma in the ancient time. Okay, so the British occupied Burma in three cups in 1826, 1852, and 1885. The schools were founded after the first and second anglo burmese wars. English became the official language during the British rule and the English, the ethnic languages continued to be spoken and learned. The foreign Christian missionaries like the British, American, Italian, Portuguese, French arrived in the capital and the towns of Myanmar. The schools for children, natives, the schools for children of natives, English natives by American missionaries in English, and English was taught as a subject. The desire to learn English increased in the years from 1858 to 1873 in Myanmar. The eighth mission schools were accepted and continued for next 60 years. The education center was founded by the British in Lower Myanmar, in Lower Burma in 1866. So in the ancient time, we called Myanmar Burma. We call the Myanmar language Burmese. So Burma and the language Burmese. But now we call our country Myanmar, the people, the Myanmar people in language, the Myanmar language. When we say the Myanmar language, we are referring to not only the uh, language used the Myanmar people, but also the ethnic languages. So this means, so when we say the Myanmar language, it means so both the Myanmar language and all the ethnic languages used in our country. When we say the Myanmar people, we are referring to not only the Burma people, but also the ethnic people. So the 
majority of our country is the Bama, but all the people are called the Myanmar people. Okay, Yangon College was established in 1884, affiliated to Calcutta University. In 1885, English language took the place of Burmese as the language of law and sorry, in the as the language of law and administration as well as the medium of instruction, medium of education. From 1885, the status of Burmese was second to English. Now let me introduce you to the education and language policies in Myanmar. I will talk about language policy in Myanmar before 1948. Language policy was initiated by the British government in 1872. The 1874 report said, so great and earnest is the desire of Burmese youth to acquire knowledge, however, superficial and useless of English at the expenses of the knowledge of their mother tongue. Nearly all of them have attempted to teach English, other studies suffering in consequence. Education policy for the British Burma was declared after the British initiation of Burma to India in 1919. Now we, uh, I will talk about three types of school used so popular in Myanmar at that time. So the first type was the European coach schools managed by Christian mission. So in this type of schools, so the English language was taught at KG, but Burmese as a medium of instruction in pre-middle school classes. The second type was Anglo Benicula schools, government high schools and middle schools. In this type of schools, English was taught. English was taught in lower classes. English was taught in lower classes, but a pass in English was required to go on to university after passing the vernacular used by ordinary people in as night standard examination. The three types of school. Okay, so the third type was vernacular schools managed by National Education Council, which was formed after 1920 wine coat. English was taught from first standard and the Anglo vernacular school curriculum was adopted. The Yangon University Act was passed by Burmese Legislative Council in September 1920. The University of Yangon was founded in December 1920, and now we have the 100 years. The Manly College was founded, affiliated to UI, June 1925, and it was upgraded to the Degree College in 1947. The education policy was initiated on 13 September 1948. The three types of school that were in existence before the war will be abolished and a uniform school system will be adopted in the country. No language other than Bami. So nationalism was very popular at that time. So no language other than Bami's or any indigenous language will be taught in primary classes and English will be taught as a second language in all schools in the post-primary classes. Teaching of English began in fifth standard in 1950 in accordance with that policy. English policy for a welfare state was written in 1952 and status of English was confirmed. English as a second compulsory language so English was taught as a second compulsory language in secondary school curriculum. 
Bamis was announced to be the medium of instruction in 1958, and English was taught as a foreign language. After 1959, the ethnic languages were taught until grade three as a subject in public schools. This is a, so according to Nicholas in 1981. Only Mo, Shan, and Karen, whose elites played an important role in a language and education, were able to produce curricula. There were no curricula for others due to the lack of scripts, curriculum, textbooks, well-trained teachers, interest of local people, complexity of linguistic settings and local balance between demography and power between various groups. And now let me move to the language policies after 1962. In 1962, Bamis became the only language of instruction for universities and pre-university classes. English was termed as a foreign language and taught from the fifth standard with the enactment of the University Act in 1964. The teaching of ethnic languages was banned. In 1962 to 1988 was not a gilded age of ethnic languages and their teaching, according to Nicholas, 2018. The major ethnic languages were taught up to grade three, five 45 minutes classes in a week. So, some of the languages, so a total of 63 languages, but the coming academic year, so the Ministry of Education will teach 67 ethnic language, languages, so at the respective schools in Myanmar. Okay, so major ethnic languages were taught up to grade three. So in grade one, grade two, and grade three, five, 45 minutes classes a week. So every day, so one class every day. Okay. Several textbooks were produced during the 1970s and 1980s for teaching of main ethnic languages. Many ethnic languages, especially Mon, Shan, and Kayin, were taught outside the school hours. English was taught. Now I'd like to explain language policy in, sorry, after 1981. English was taught from kindergarten in 1981. So it was changed from KG, sorry, fifth standard, so grade five to KG. So English was started to be taught from kindergarten in 1981, starting from 1981. English was to be used as a medium of instruction at upper second, secondary level to teach science subjects and at university level. But bilingual use of the uh, teaching is also allowed in classrooms. English was to be used in all departments except Myanmar and history at postgraduate level in 1980. Teaching ethnic languages was restricted in mid 1980s. The name of the country, Burma, was changed to the current name, Myanmar, in 1989. The special four year education development plan was introduced in 2000, 2001 to 2003, 2004 financial year to develop the education sector and to strive for the development of highly qualified human resources. The 30 year long-term education development plans 
for 2001 to 2030 was also developed. Teaching ethnic languages was not paid much attention to, though inclusive education was considered at that time. Comprehensive Education Sector Review, CESR, was conducted in 2012. So it consists of rapid assessment, phase one, phase two, in-depth analysis, and phase three, development of co-state sector plan. Inclusive education was taken into consideration. 73% of the respondents in 54 townships was recommended. So they recommended learning English from kindergarten. The tradition of teaching English has become rooted in the education system in Myanmar. English was taught from kindergarten in spite of the recommendation made by the CSR to teach English from grade four as children of ethnic minorities need to master their language first. But so most of the Myanmar people recommended learning English from kindergarten. Okay, so, so they recognized the importance of mastering the international language at that time. After 1981, the curricula were reviewed and changes were made. Teaching of ethnic languages outside the school hours was allowed in government schools. The technical support for creating ethnic language curricula was provided. Now I will deal with language education after 2014. The 2014 National Education Law recognized the right of all citizens to education and encouraged the free and compulsory primary education. It mandates the establishment of an education quality assurance system and extends the basic education system to 13 years, KG plus 12, including KG. It acknowledges learning of ethnic languages and culture and the use of ethnic languages as a classroom language. So the national education law allows to use the ethnic languages as a classroom languages. So it also allows to use both the ethnic languages and the official language, which is the Myanmar language, both so bilingual as a classroom language. So the 2014 <coughs> National Education Law provides a definition of, as well as a commitment to the inclusive education and commits to a decent, decentralized education system. It recognizes the other types of non-government basic education schools and 2015 ethnic rights law was enacted and the use of the use and development of ethnic languages are reinforced. Excuse me, Dr. Jomin. Yeah. Uh, you still have five more minutes. Yes, thank you. To present. Okay, thank okay. you. So after 2014, the National Education Strategy Plan was developed to carry out transformational shifts, and the National Education Policy Commission was formed. Okay, so under the national uh, NEPC, so we have National Curriculum Committee and uh, NHUAC and Rector's Committee. And the NESP supports and promotes the ethnic languages and culture, including for the primary age ethnic children who speak different languages. Curriculum reforms were made at, as, at basic education. KG plus 12 system was adopted. The mother tongue was used as a classroom language. So, the local curriculum is included at primary level. Uh, the ethnic languages were allowed to be taught under the management of the state and regional government. So th this is according to the 
2014 National Education, sorry, 2014 uh, Myanmar National Education Law. So the local, locally relevant content was introduced in curriculum framework. The local curriculums were developed and they include the languages of ethnic races, ethnic cultures and traditions and so on. All teaching materials were developed by respective states and regions and assessment was administered by local governments. The local curriculum was development, uh, the local curriculum development committee and curriculum implementation, implementation committee were formed. The teaching training programs were provided by the local curriculum develop, development teams and the technical assistance was provided by the Ministry of Education. The local curriculum was in, included as one of the subjects in the four-year education colleges pro, program. Currently, so a total of 63 languages are being taught by, so this number of teachers and the, this over, so 76, thousand ethnic children in these schools. Okay, so these are the data. And financial and technical support were, are provided in drafting the state language policies in Mon Cayenne and Kachin State, teaching and learning materials uh, for 24 ethnic groups from Mon Cayenne and Kachin were developed. So the research on the effect, effect, effectiveness of teaching and learning of the Myanmar nationalities languages was carried out in 2019 in support of, from, with the support of UNICEF. The books on ethnic languages, picture dictionaries and teaching materials were published from my department, Department of Myanmar Nationalities Languages. So the Ministry of Ethnic Education was formed and the discussion on language policy has been carried out and the international conference, conferences were held. So, the implementation of the state governments and the language, language policy has not been approved, but the national constitution in 1948 so recognized the rights for ethnic races, including the indigenous ethnic minority groups. So status of English language, medium of instruction at high school, edu higher education level needs to reconsider due to no, deficit of English proficiency of teacher, medium of instruction at basic education. So these are the some of the challenges. So uh, most of the uh, challenges so we have is, so we have a total of over one, so 135 languages, ethnic languages. So even in Chin State, there are over 53 ethnic languages due to the difficult transportation from one mountain to another. So it is very uh, challenging and very political. Okay, and then the next challenge is that, so, okay, for example, in Kachin State, in a classroom in Kachin State, there are more than one group of ethnic children in, in the same classroom. Okay, for example, in a classroom, there will be the Myanmar children, not only the Myanmar children, but also the, okay, so two or three ethnic groups of Kachin people. So in a classroom, there are more than one ethnic group of children. And then, so we have difficulty to use the mother tongue as a medium of instruction or as a classroom language, because so there, are, there is a diversity of languages in the same classroom. And then there are limited number of classrooms and, and we cannot share the classrooms Okay, for that variety of, not diversity of chair, not different ethnic groups. So decision of one common standardized ethnic language to be taught in textbooks and teaching materials to be developed in 53 races in Chin nationality. The use of local curriculum and government school curriculum. 
So type sharing during the school hours. Okay, and then most textbooks are translation from Yamaha, not feasible to teach in classroom. So low salaries for ethnic language teachers, but we have appointed not so so teaching assistant and language teachers. Uh, 